Hello everyone, my name is Neil Mustik. Welcome to the next video on uh, the texturing thing that I was going to show you how to do. Uh, in the previous one, <coughs> we made our texture look like this. Yeah. Also, we did our normal map on our model, so it looks like this. Now in this video, we're going to do a little bit more detailing. We're going to make sure that there are edges and bends and make it look more like clothing. I know with leather, you don't really need to do that, but it's just for tutorial purposes that I am going to. So I'm going to do this first, make a copy for the low poly, so I don't have to make a new low poly afterwards. And with this model, Let's make sure that all the mod modifiers are applied. And instead of object mode, I'm going to go to sculpt mode. I'm going to select my clay strip, open the topology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to put it at eight. I'm all, I always put it at eight. So this time as well. First of all, I'm going to add in some uh, small details to make it look a little bit more wrinkly. This middle line shouldn't be like that. So more details. There we go. I do want the chest to be a little bit better, more visible. And this I'm going to smooth out. I'm going to do smooth on the topology so you can see it smoothed out. And my strength, I'm going to put it down to 2.2, uh, 0.22. Now I'm just going to smooth everything out. As you can see, it's already starting to give the feeling of being cloth. Going to do the same on his back. And again, as you can see, it's already starting to give you the feeling of being cloth. But this is not the cloth that we want it to be. Well, not yet, at least. Okay. So I did this really fast. Uh, I'm bound to make some mistakes along the way. Okay, so how I do this, this is a personal thingy. I lower my DIN topology to three. So I have a lot of detail in here. <coughs> and I go to the inflate tool. Then I just go like this. There's nothing more to it. I just go like this. Inflate a little bit of the edges. Warp them together just a little bit. And I'm over edge, uh, I'm, I'm going over the top with this right now. This is just so you guys can see what it is that I'm doing here. So as you can see, this is starting to look more and more like cloth. Don't need to do more over there. With the arms, it's going to be the exact same thing. And down here, it should be more wavy as well. Okay, so the back side, the exact same thing. And again, I'm over exaggerating just to show you guys how to work with it. Because <coughs> it depends if, if you want to have your textures inside of a, a belt or a pants or whatever, then you need to do a little bit more than when it's just a wavy little thingy. So I'm just making it look like this 
going to over exaggerate a little bit more. There we go. So that's going to start looking like cloth. I'm going to do a little bit over here as well to add a little bit to it. There we go. So this is starting to look like cloth. Now the next thing, I'm going to take my smooth brush, I'm going to lower it to 0 0.15, and I'm going to smooth again. Because as you saw, it's giving me these nasty edges, and I don't want those. So again, smooth, maybe a little bit more, maybe 0.2. just to smooth these out. There we go. And we're not done yet, by the way. This is again, some minor detailing. There, so a very, very wrinkly shirt. And then the last thing that I do, just to add in that tiny little bit, tiny little detail, I go to my crease tool. <coughs> the strength is fine. The stroke is fine as well. I'm just going to take smooth stroke so I get it something like that. And where it says curve, I'm going to take the first one because that will give the detail that I want. Whoops. So I'm going to put a line over here, a line there, one line, more lines. Whoops, that's not a good line. So I'm just going to go over some of the edges just to give it more of that wrinkly effect. There we go. Maybe a line over here as well. And one over here. For the shoulder. Like so and a little one over here. And again, I'm going to go back to the smooth tool, smooth it out just a little bit, especially the end points. And I'm going to smooth out this as well. So this is just trying, seeing what's possible, what's not. And there we go. We just, maybe I need to smooth out this a little bit more. We just made ourselves a wrinkly shirt. Okay, so you think we're done now? Wrong. We got our high poly. This is going to be our high poly and this is going to be our low poly. Now, the reason why I told you to make two, pair, two copies is because we're going to use this one low poly one to uh, to make our high poly look a little bit nicer a little bit better well I mean not better but we're going to use the low poly that we made earlier we're going to use that to mimic our high poly uh, object so it's easier to unwrap this so down here in your little bar thingy, I'm going to select the magnet thing and I'm going to put it on faces. Now I'm going to take this point because it's still, it's uh, very deep inside of the model and I don't want that. 
and all the vertices that are all the little polygons that are inside the model I'm going to drag out just a little bit like this Just make sure that you don't move them around too much because that will definitely mess up your uh, your model. You can move them around a little bit because that will give it a tiny bit more detail on your image. There. There. That's good. That's good. This one isn't. This one isn't. That's good. There we go. And we're almost through. Well, at least I am. Nope. I still have a backside to do. We already unwrapped this model, so the more of these things that you're doing now, the more you mess it up, like I am actually doing right now, the more of uh, details you'll have, which isn't a bad thing. There. Like here there and there and there and there uh, this one and this one i'm going to drag them out just a little tiny bit there so sh this should be fine for our model the next thing that i need to do is we got our model we got both our models i'm going to put this back on increments and turn off the magnet tool now i'm going to scale this times 10. So you can see it's really big. I'm going to export this as testy LP. This is how I do it. So I know that this is my low poly, S.1. Now I'm going to take the high poly, so scale 10. Export high poly. This is going to take a little bit longer. There we go. And then S.1. Okay. <clears throat> so we made ourselves a nicely looking shirt thing. It's not really that perfect, but it is. It looks like it's cloth, and that's what I wanted. I, I definitely over exaggerated on it. But yeah. So the next thing is we open our X normals, remove, and remove. In our baking tools, I'm going to name these testy. Okay, so my low poly, I dropped it in here. Right, my Unity is uh, is loading in the high poly. <laughs> which will take it a little bit of time. I could also go to this map. There we go. Because it's already in Unity, it's just not uh, not attached yet. Where is it? Testy high poly, this is the low poly. So testy LP, testy high P, baking, to, uh, baking options, 2048, that's fine. I'm going to generate the maps. Now the reason why I scaled it up by 10 is because there's so many details in this model that if I kept it that small, my mapping wouldn't uh, catch the details. That's why I had to make them a little bit bigger to get a lot more mo uh, a lot more uh, detail into it. Now he's doing the occlusion map. <laughs> 
So yeah, for some models, it's not necessary. I mean, if you're making a, a top view game, it's not you don't need this much details into it. You can reduce the size of your mapping to 512 or something. And uh, <coughs> you, you definitely don't have to put in as many details as I just did to this little chest piece. Okay, so releasing data and it's done. I can close this because I'm not going to use it anymore. He's going to load those in. And I'm going to delete Testy, LP, and HP Harry Potter because I don't need them anymore. We got our little model right here. Where's the test material? It's here. I'm going to remove this normal map. Like I said, I'm going to remove that normal map. Ah, right. It's it's not a, it's it's just a texture. It's not the the unwrap uh the the normal map. So I got my testing normals right here. I'm going to put those in normals, fix, and as you can see, it gave it the feeling of having. <clears throat> the normal maps. Let's remove the albedo for a second. <clears throat> so now you can see it a lot better. This is the chart that we just made. I am going to put the occlusion on and the, where is it? The height map. There. I'm going to make the height map really small. And the occlusion can be the way it was. <laughs> so this is our cloth simulating thingy. Now the thing is, I use both texture, uh, both normals on the same object. That's really easy to do. You can see secondary maps. You just go to your other normal thing and you put it in the normal step 0.5, and there you have it. I've got the two normal maps on top of each other. I'm also going to put the texture back on. And as you can see, we have what we wanted to have. And I must say it looks pretty nice. Let's put the light in front of it. So drag this guy backwards so we can see the front side better. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I think that if I leave this at 1, it doesn't make any difference. So yeah, that's basically how to make normal maps. I, I showed you two ways now. I showed you the, the way you can do it in Blender, which in, in my opinion, uh, for me personally, I use Blender for the, the little detailing normal mapping. That's why I use Blender. And I use X normals for huge normal mapping, like the cloth thingies that you just saw. And that's how I got it. Like this guy has it with his hoodie. I hope I, I showed you guys something. I hope you guys are happy about this tutorial. Ugh. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone.